Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Before I go any further, I need to let you folks know that I've had some equipment failures here in Colorado at my father's place. It's going to be a couple of days before I can get replacements. So in the meantime, I'm using up some backup equipment, which frankly is uh, pretty lousy. So I apologize for the quality of the image. Audio seems to be okay, though. So since most of this stuff that I'm going to be talking to you about is audio related, I hope you guys Guys can bear with me once again. Thanks very much for tuning in. Okay, let's go ahead and get right down to this. For those of you who clicked on this, you're wondering what the hell am I talking about? A launch sometime next year. The FAA has been saying entirely the opposite. So is Elon Musk. So is just about everybody. But that does not seem to be the case because as I reported earlier, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service also has their own process to go through that's entirely separate from the FAA before things can be approved and they have not been doing this all in concert with SpaceX nor are they relying on a list of corrective actions that SpaceX provided for them. Instead, they're doing this all themselves. So what I'm going to be doing is quote Quoting extensively from an article from Gizmodo about this particular topic because they did a good job reporting on it and getting information from the Fish and Wildlife Service. Let me tell you, uh, disturbing stuff. And yes, indeed, we could have a delay until 2024. So here's how it goes. Before this latest edition and any other alterations can be put to the test, the FWS, in other words, the Fish and Wildlife Service, needs to conduct its own assessment. And when we're talking about the latest edition, we're talking about the water deluge system, the sound suppression system, that uh, water-cooled plate. While SpaceX has apparently already moved forward with its own corrective actions, the FWS has yet to review these upgrades, particularly, as it says here, the newly installed deluge system. An FWS email sent to Bloomberg, so apparently Bloomberg has been doing a lot of this reporting, they claim that the review process could span anywhere from 30 to 135 days. Given SpaceX's hopes of relaunching Starship next month, this development could significantly disrupt the company's timelines. Emphasizing the environmental concerns, Aubrey Buzek, a public affairs specialist at the FWS, conveyed to Bloomberg in an email, quote, once the service reviews FAA's final biological assessment and deems it complete, consultation will be reinitiated and we will have 135 days to issue a final biological assessment, unquote. Buzek further, further clarified that if additional information becomes necessary, the time frame can be extended upon mutual agreement between the FAA and the service. Obviously, SpaceX has nothing to say about that. It's between the FAA and the FWS. So, should the FWS utilize the full 135-day window, Starship's launch will obviously not take place this year. Officials with the FWS, quote, have yet to begin a formal review of SpaceX's upgrades, unquote. And this is per a statement from the FWS just a few days ago. So even though the FAA may have been proceeding with their investigation, corrective actions, etc., this whole time, Obviously, this is not being done by the Fish and Wildlife Service, and they have their own investigation to carry out. Why the FAA did not make this clear from the beginning, I can't begin to explain to you. Let's keep going. The environmental scrutiny arises from the potential effects of SpaceX's activities on sensitive local habitats hosting endangered species. One of the big problems that I've always talked about with this particular location, these protected wildlife refuges and the endangered species that live there. I'll go on. The FAA has sought consultation with the FWS under the Endangered Species Act as of August 11th, aiming to evaluate the implications of SpaceX's post mishap modifications. Spraying water upwards into an advancing rocket may seem harmless, but the company needs to follow strict rules as it pertains to the discharging of industrial process wastewater, specifically rules mandated in the Federal Clean Water Act. 
As the FWS assessment looms, the FAA has yet to grant SpaceX the necessary approvals for its proposed second flight. If the FAA determines that its prior environmental assessment from 2022 is no longer valid due to modifications made for the upcoming flight, a more comprehensive review may be warranted, as the regulator explained in an emailed statement. And of course, the FAA needs to be happy with the recently executed corrective actions. Needless to say, this could serve to delay the launch even further. In its statement, the FAA emphasized its commitment to ensuring all safety, environmental, and regulatory concerns are addressed before SpaceX is given clearance for another flight. So again, let me go ahead and reiterate exactly why this is such a significant statement here and why this could be such a colossal pain in the ass for SpaceX. Not only SpaceX, but everybody that's relying on SpaceX, NASA, for the Artemis 3 mission, mission, etc. It's because the FWS has not been carrying out their own investigation in concert with SpaceX or the FAA. As far as we can tell, they're only just now getting started and they have up to 135 days to get that done. Theoretically, they could do it a lot faster, but once again, does the Fish and Wildlife Service have any sort of incentive to move with any sort of sense of urgency? In my opinion, no, they don't. The FWS doesn't give a damn if we go to the moon. They don't give a damn if we can send 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit. They don't give a damn about space, even though I have stated and pointed out during my tour how Starship will save the world, that Starship can indeed produce green energy alternatives, much more efficient green energy alternatives than we can build here on Earth that could save us from global warming, from damaging mining, all kinds of things. But once again, these are things that are not pointed out to the FWS by NASA. NASA doesn't seem to point these things out to much of anybody. So the Fish and Wildlife Service doesn't give a damn about NASA is a agendas. They don't give a damn if we go back to the moon. What they do care about is the safety and the security of these endangered species and these protected wildlife refuges. That is their consideration above all other considerations. Now, obviously, they work in conjunction with the FAA. And, you know, given the PEA that was put forward the last time, the Fish and Wildlife Service clearly is willing to make some compromises, etc., in order to work with the FAA to get something done that the FAA wants to get done. However, given what happened on April 20th, and I've been saying this for a long time, this changes the whole ball game because Starship not only ripped up its launch pad. It also deposited tons and tons of concrete into the Gulf of Mexico, spreading dust and debris over a several kilometer radius all over this region. Now, granted, none of that was probably all that harmful, but nevertheless, it wasn't what the FAA said it was going to be. What happened was not what the FAA's anomaly contingency plan said was going to happen. So as a result, the Fish and Wildlife Service is going to take a lot harder look at this. And at the same time, of course, the water deluge system, well, that didn't exist on the previous launch on April 20th. And the whole wastewater, Clean Water Act issues, that sort of thing, those were not a consideration before, and they definitely are now. Does that mean that the Fish and Wildlife Service is going to delay this process for 135 days? Or even worse, might they require a more in-depth environmental assessment than we've had to contend with up to this point? Sadly, all of these things, in my opinion, are possible. Once again, as I've been saying for a while, I think SpaceX really needs to seriously look at transferring all of their launch capabilities out to Cape Canaveral and forget about this region. It's too much of a hassle, too much red tape, too many I's to dot, too many T's to cross. They can do lots of other experiments in this region. There are many things that they can do in Boca Chica that are very useful to the Starship program, but in my opinion, Depending, of course, on what the Fish and Wildlife Service says here. I mean, if they greenlight this in 30 days, that could change everything. But if they don't, if they present a real serious problem here, then I think it's time for Elon Musk 
to back up and punt. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. It's incredibly important to the success of my channel. Once again, I apologize for the quality of this video, just using some backup stuff for a couple of days. Hopefully that will all be resolved soon. Also, please check the description for various ways to support this content so I can keep bringing it to you. And as always, stay angry about space.